Hey, I'm BK Tech, and um, in this video, I'm going to show you two ways of transmitting binary signals over long distances efficiently in terms of space and resources. The first thing I'm going to talk about is hexadecimal encoding. So you can encode four binary digits or bits as one hexadecimal number. So redstone dust will transmit a hexadecimal signal. Um, this is often called analog in redstone because you don't really get any more analog than this in terms of redstone because it, yeah. Um, so if we flick on the one and four bits, we'll get one and four over here turned on. Uh, the way that the encoder for this works is quite simple. It just subtracts the bit values from 15. Um, so we turn these pistons off when the bit is turned on, which means it stops subtracting that. So we end up with the correct value in hexadecimal here. The decoder works similarly, but in, rever in reverse, it, well, not really. It, uh, the decoder basically, it attempts to subtract each bit value from the number. And if it can without going below zero, it will do so and then turn the lamp on. But if it can't, it will not. So we here we compare eight with the input signal. If eight is greater than the input signal, then we can't subtract it without going below zero. So we don't, and we don't turn on the lamp. But, uh, and, and so we have five going through to here. Um, and here we compare four with the input signal. So four here, uh, you can see that's four. Um, we compare, that's odd, why is that? That shouldn't be in subtract mode. Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it can be in subtract mode. It won't make a difference. Um, in this case, anyway. Um, so we compare four with the input signal. Four is not greater than the input signal, so we can subtract it without going below zero. So we turn on this lamp and we push in this composter so that we, which has the same value as, as the other one over here. Um, so we subtract that from the signal. And then over here, we compare two. We're now at signal strength one because we had five and we subtracted four from it. Um, so we compare, we compare two, uh, two here to the input signal. Um, two is greater than one, so we don't turn on the lamp and we don't subtract two. And then we've got something left over at the end. Uh, so we just, we know that's one. Um, so what's great about this is it's quite simple. It's quite easy to understand. It's quite easy to work with the output signal. You just wait until it stabilizes and then you have a constant signal. Um, and it's very easy to process hexadecimal using standard redstone components because dust is hexadecimal by nature. Uh, the disadvantage is it's quite slow. It takes two game ticks to transmit the signal of four blocks, which when you're transmitting it over a long distance adds up. And also the decoder is pretty slow as well. Um, so the other thing I want to show you is serial encoding or serial transmission. It's not really an encoding so much. Um, so serial transmission uses flickering rails. Um, in this case, I've used two. I have a synchronization line, which synchronizes the decoder with the encoder. And I have a data line, which actually sends the information. Eventually, I want to make an encoder and decoder that can use the same line for both of these. So it triggers the line for a sync, and then it sends the data, and then you're done. Um, but I haven't managed to do that yet. Uh, hopefully I will do that at some point and I might make another video on it. Um, but for now it requires two rail lines. So the way it works is first of all it triggers the sync line which starts the decoder um, and then it sends the data using this rail. Um, if you flick the levers it'll enable each 
observer. So each observer cons corresponds to a bit that triggers these pistons. The pistons are required to add delay within the tick. Otherwise, uh, this observer would still be on cooldown which th when the next flash starts, so it wouldn't be able to respond to everything as quickly as it needs to. Um, so the levers enable the observers, and you can see if we turn them all on and trigger it, that observer flashes quite quickly. And then if we flick this off, it will have a different pattern. Um, so it's relatively straightforward. We enable the observers using the switches, and then we send a signal through each in sequence. Um, and that flashes this in the correct pattern. This is flashed first, just triggered by this. Um, these two observers are required to get the correct timings between these two uh, lines. The decoder works quite similarly, actually. Uh, it uses the same repeater setup, uh, so it triggers each observer with uh, four game ticks in between. And we use this observer setup to trigger it for uh, four game ticks, so that it doesn't drop the block. Um, if I just trigger the sync line, you'll see how it works. It pushes each block down in sequence so that when these observers get triggered by the rail, uh, each one is only enabled once. So the one, one is enabled at a time, and so it will send the signal to these pistons, which trigger the T flip-flops. Uh, so it results in a bitwise XOR, for those of you who know your uh, logical... Um, not logical, your uh, bitwise operations. Uh, it, it does a an XOR with the value that's currently stored there. You could also just put block, uh, put repeaters here and delay the signal enough that you end up with um, a momentary binary signal, which you could then use to trigger something or you could store it in a register or something. Um, but this was nice and easy to set up, so I, that's what I've done. So, yeah. That's two ways. So the the advantage, sorry, the advantage of uh, serial transmission is that it's much faster than hexadecimal. You can transmit a signal nine blocks. Um, in fact, you can actually put blocks here as well. So ten blocks. Um, only using with only two game ticks of delay. So it's pretty fast compared to hex. Um, it's not quite as fast as just sending the binary signals per bit because it does have a bit of latency from being serial rather than parallel um but it's it's quite fast um obviously in real life serial is often faster than parallel in minecraft that's not the case because parallel doesn't have the uh kind of slight desynchronization that we get in in real life uh but Serial is much more compact than parallel, so it's useful in that regard. Um, I do want to get this down to using only one wire, but for now it uses two, and it's quite simple using two. I I think using one wire will be a bit more complex. Hopefully it won't be too complex, but we'll see, I guess. Um, for now, using two wires is still pretty compact, and... It's very easy. Oh, and another advantage of this is that it doesn't require more wires if you have more bits. So hexadecimal, if you want to send eight bits, you'd need two wires. Whereas with this, you would just increase the size of the encoder and decoder, and it would just work. Um, it it doesn't require any more than two wires ever. It would be a little bit slower because you have to send twice as many bits. So it send it would take twice as long to send the signal. But it would be um, no no less compact. So yeah, that's um, binary signal transmission using serial and hexadecimal in Minecraft. Hope you found this useful.